terms of rushing to judgment on the five things we need to fix, today's not the day to do that. Um, but the, 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 the collaboration with the front office and thinking around those things does start after today. And we will have a very measured um, plan to get those things fixed. And part of that will be input from the players on our roster that are here or could be back next year. We always listen to the voice of the player. Um, and part of that will be um, the philosophies and the voice of the new coach that we hire in the coming weeks. Just to be a little more direct on this, yeah. um, the players that you've named as your captains, Anthony and LeBron, where does your highest paid player on your roster fit into that conversation with Russell Westbrook? Russ is, um, is a Hall of Fame player that um, gave everything he could to this organization this year. He battled every game, and we're so appreciative of that. Um, in terms of Russell Westbrook and his future, part of that's in his control. First things first, he has a player option. I'm sure he'll sit down with his agent and have discussions around that. And like any player, we'll partner with him um, after that decision is made about what's best for his future. Um, and again, rest assured, we're going to look under every stone for ways to be better um, and be open to anything that will improve our team and put us in a, in a position to compete at a higher level next year than we did this year. Um, I'll just say... That statement is not about any specific player on our roster. It's a general statement. Um, I don't think it's fair today to take any player on our roster and discuss his future, whether he'll be in a trade, won't be in a trade. I don't, I don't think that's fair. But in general, um, the statement I made, I stand behind. Last two, we'll do uh, Mike Trudeau, and then we'll follow up with uh, Kyle. Hey, Rob, LeBron had mentioned the, you know, the 41 different starting lineups and how injuries and different things led to that and the difficulty building cohesion. And then on the other hand, the 1920 roster that you built, you know, starts 24 and three, right? So did you get a sense of just some of the things that worked basketball wise that didn't need, aside from LeBron, the idea of course being on the court and just how that was a little bit different from this year and, and you know, how did, how do you kind of think about that as you now try to move forward to this next shape of what the roster was? Yeah, I think basketball chemistry can be, you know, an elusive concept that you don't always know if it's going to be there or not until you get a chance to see if players gel together. Um, and there's so many factors that come into play on whether that will or won't happen. And this year it got played out in various ways. You bring up, you know, the injuries to star players. We also signed, you know, a point guard that we didn't get a single, single game out of in Kendrick Nunn. But we're, we're in a results business. We're not, it's a wins and loss business. We're not in an excuse business. So today is not about making excuses for why we didn't succeed. Um, but I do think um, a chemistry of, of players that are willing to work hard together and make the sacrifices needed to, to compete every night at a high level is, is, is a North star and is a barometer, but the calculus for Lakers success is pretty binary. Either we win a championship or we don't. There's no gold stars for the in-between or there's no attaboys. And this year we did not, we failed in that mission. And that's really the way we look at things here. And um, to get into a position where we can be a team that competes next year at that level to try to bring our fans the 18th title is going to take a lot of focus on what you bring up, which is making sure that um, the chemistry of the team is healthy and that we're growing together throughout the course of the season. Last question, Kyle. Um, you know, we were talking to LeBron about um, you know his possible contract extension. I know he and Rich can't talk to you guys right now about that, <coughs> but he's also said before, I see myself playing in purple and gold as long as I'm playing. Is it an important goal for the franchise to try and see LeBron retire as a late coach? The, the partnership we've had first with LeBron, um, his representatives has been, has been great and um, just a gold standard. And we've appreciated his professionalism and directness. Um, the, not, the amount of conversations we have over the course of the season is, um, is really meaningful. And every indication that we've received is that he sees the Lakers as his home. And the CBA, the NBA collective bargaining agreement is very 
specific about um, what we can and can't say about player negotiations. We have to be very mindful and follow those rules. So I can't talk about, you know, his future contract status, but the feeling is that um, he loves being a Laker and sees this as a long-term home. And um, that's been made loud and clear. Thanks, Rob. 